and welcome to the fifth quarter AZ. My name is Danny Neal and I'm one of your co-hosts for today. And I just want to wish everybody a happy Friday morning. All right. So, uh, hey, it's April, it's springtime, and it's supposed to snow today. Welcome to Flagstaff, Arizona. But before we get started, I got to bring in my co-host, my my, my um, main co-host, the original co-host, Mr. Tyrone Johnson. He's out with a few little sniffles today, you know, but he's feeling all right. He'll be better, but we just didn't want him up all on the show sneezing and all that. So, uh, you know, we, we wish Coach Johnson, you know, many blessings. Get better, man. And uh, But we got somebody here who can take care of business, and that's my guy, Mr. Tommy Hernandez. Good morning, Tommy. How you doing, man? I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I woke up this morning, and things are well. So, you know, it's uh, not a foot of snow out there or anything today. So things are good, man. How about you? I'm doing good, but... Uh, with spring sports comes snow. It's supposed to snow again this afternoon. So, uh, right. yeah, so that, that, you know, wreaks havoc, uh, havoc on our local, uh, spring sports, but you know, we get, we get through it. We're, uh, resilient. We, we power through the, the snow and the rain and move games and do what we have to do. So, uh, yeah, other than that, doing well. <laughs> hey man, it's gotta be tough with spring sports in this town, you know, and I know you are with the NAU softball team. So how are you? maneuvering in between there and and getting all that done with the weather the way it is uh we're doing we're doing good we're most of our practices are indoors right now uh you know how that we yep. hit a lot so we better hit this weekend we <laughs> we're actually hosting uh grand canyon university down in mingus high school this uh tomorrow uh we have a three game series against the gcu club team so uh looking forward to that we're currently Nine and zero, and GCU is right behind us in second place. So it should be a, a great series. Well, congratulations, man! Congratulations, and uh, just to familiarize everybody with like like the softball and the club sports. What's the difference? Is that sanctioned by the NCAA in any kind of way? No. So NAU doesn't currently have a um, a, a D one softball team. So we we participate in the. Um, the National Club Softball Association. It's it's nationwide. It's not mm -hmm. sanctioned by sports, but it is. It's a huge organization. There's, you know, conference, regionals. There's World Series. Uh, we're we're uh, currently in the Pacific South Conference in the Pacific region. Um, not sure what happened there. So, uh, sorry about that. But uh, we're in the. Uh, you know, Pacific region and the Pacific South Conference. Uh, hopefully, we can make it to back to World Series. We made it to World Series two years it's, ago. That's in, yes. in Georgia. So, yeah. So it's it's a big organization. It's a it's a great opportunity for these young ladies continue playing softball where they're further in their education at NAU. So, um, and we're doing great. Right, and softball is not the only club sport at NAU. Right, I know they got oh, hockey. No. Yeah. yeah, hockey's probably their best program. Hockey does great. They've been around for a while. Chris mm -hmm. Walsh over there does great. Um, yep. They got volleyball, hockey, uh, frisbee, basketball. There's tons of sports. Um, so even know. though they have a NCAA sanctioned volleyball team, they still have a club volleyball team also. It's, yes, they do. Oh, okay, uh, you can do that. So you can do that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. and it's competitive. There's, I mean, it, there's great players. There's, it's definitely a step above like intramurals or something. It's, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's it's definitely uh, a lot of great volleyball players out there still, still playing club ball. Well, that's all right, man. And, and kudos to you for getting out there and keeping that softball going, man. Because I know softball in this town is huge. Oh yeah, yeah. softball. Yeah, yeah, with, the, with the girls and everybody, and I know I know how Flag High and Coconino compete, and MPA competes, and I'm not sure if Basis has a softball team or not. Not yet. No, I think they're okay. just running right now. Okay, okay. So, but there are a lot of good softball players out there, and and I know you take a lot of the area girls. I do. On, I, I on currently, your team. yeah, I don't have any Flagstaff girls right now, but I have a couple girls from Page. Okay. Um, some uh, some Sand Devil alumni. <laughs> we have uh, we have two of them, so we I'm super excited to have both of them on board. And and actually, our pitcher Grace Jump led uh, 
she was 17 and one in her high school career at, at Page High School. So really, yeah, she's, she's amazing. She had plenty of opportunities to go play at the next level and, and decided NAU was a good fit for her with, uh, mm -hmm. with her, with her educational goals. So that's gotta be number one. Oh yeah, that's it. That's it. That, 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 that's got to be known. And this has got to be the first time in a while that you haven't had any Flagstaff girls on your team. This is. This is the first time since I've taken the program over that I don't have a Flagstaff, uh, a, a girl from Flagstaff. So, so we uh, put that call out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully next year I get a couple. I've talked to a couple that are interested, and uh, so hopefully I'll have a couple Flagstaff girls here soon. Well, that's all right, man. That, that That's good stuff. Yeah. And so, you know, just with the spring sports, I know Flag High, Coconut, like I said, everybody's out there cross country and just, just, I, I see them out there running, man. It's, it's snowing and it's raining yeah. and they, they're still putting in the running, man. And uh, I don't know. For me, that just can't be that healthy. It'd be that cold. It'd be out there <laughs> running like that, man. Right. <laughs> you know, but um, we know this is a running town and it's getting, more of a running mecca every day seems like. Oh, absolutely! Running is is huge in Flagstaff. It's a, you know, an amazing place to come train and uh, right from from middle school through high school to NAU. Uh, right, Flagstaff's right. packed with with champions, even post NAU with the uh, Northern Arizona Running Associations and clubs and. Well, and, Coconino uh, Community College did well. Yeah, right? yeah, they so, did really good. So, yeah. so it's all good, man. But um, anyway. Let, let's let's shift sports. We talk softball. We talk running. Let's talk about our guest today. So uh, I will let you have the honors of bringing out our guest today. It's a special person, and um, you know I'm excited to meet her. I've, I've I've talked to her a few minutes before we came on, and um, I'm just excited to uh, learn about her and uh, you know get to know her. Yeah, so I'm I'm super excited uh, for today's guest. This probably will be. Uh, one of the longest introductions uh, because she's accomplished so much, but uh, she's a Winslow High School alumni where she was a state championship with the women's basketball team there. Uh, she's a scientist. Uh, educationally, she went to, uh, she got her undergrad from ASU. Um, she received her MPH and PhD in public health from UNLV. Uh, I think that's where she met my sister. Um, is where where our connection is. Uh, she completed her MLS in Indigenous uh, Peoples Law from University of Oklahoma of Law, uh, Oklahoma College of Law. Excuse me. Um, she did pre-doctoral fellowships at John Hopkins University. Uh, she's currently a faculty assistant professor at University of New Mexico, CEO and co-founder of United Nations, a nonprofit organization that serves Indian Country on multiple initiatives, founder and CEO of Dr. B's Collections, a Native American fashion line, owner of two professional men's basketball teams in Mexico. Um, she served on, as a tribal health advisor on the Obama administration. She sits on the board of directors for inclusion for L'Oreal USA and has a partnership with NFL Alumni Association Las Vegas chapter uh just to to give you a brief overlook uh of our guest today dr crystal lee welcome good morning doctor good morning everyone thank uh, you for having me on this morning it's truly an honor so thank uh, you you are quite accomplished that is <laughs> awesome that that is special that is special thank so, you must be that Winslow water. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. So tell us about your your basketball playing experience coming move uh growing up in Winslow. Actually, um a small correction. I actually grew up in Windorock, Arizona, which is a little bit more northeast. Right. Um, so it's on the Navajo Nation, the capital of the Navajo Nation, and I just happened to have fallen in love with basketball. Um, I remember it was a huge rivalry at the time between Windrock High School and Winslow High School on their women's basketball team. So I used to go there as a kid and watch that great rivalry between Don Petronovich and Jimmy Skeet um, at, the, at those times. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, indeed. And, and I, 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 I knew Don and Jimmy. So, um, yo, Don was around for many, many years, and Jimmy was a heck of a player himself. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. yes and how I ended up going to Winslow was um, my mom on my side of the family. So I just want to properly introduce myself for my Dene mm -hmm. relatives who might be listening and be like, well, what's her clan? Because we might be related. So actually, <laughs> my clans are um and I am originally from Tisto, Arizona, which is a very small community close to Delcon, about 40 minutes away from Winslow. That's where my family originally comes from. And a lot of my family members went to Winslow High School. So by by way of that, I chose to follow my family tradition and um, attend Winslow High School. Well, that's, and I'm sure they're happy that you did. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It was, uh, I believe, you know, it was that embark of a time when, you know, right now, I think a lot of youth have so many other amazing opportunities on at the time that I grew up, I seen comparison. Our our opportunities were a lot limit, a lot more limited, and that's when you just kind of put your heart into soul into a thing or two. And so my first love happened to be basketball, and it's brought me so so along my my journey, my trajectory, and my professional path. Right. So. Uh... Did you play any other sports besides basketball growing up? Mm, not really. Uh, I don't know <laughs> if cross country is necessarily playing, but <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> and and track and field. Um, I did that in high school, but it was I was mainly focused on basketball. Right on, good. Um, so so what kind of player were you? What what position did you play? Were you were you out there aggressive, getting after it? <laughs> I was a, a two three um shooting guard and I was pretty tall at the time for for that position. Um I'm about five nine. So mm -hmm. being a two three um shooting guard was was wasn't and especially on from the res and reservation based schools and, and moving on northern Arizona, um pretty tall for, for a shooting guard. So um, my dad used to, I just would like to take a second and talk about my father, if that's oh, okay. Absolutely, um, yeah, definitely. You know, my father passed less than a year ago, um, but he's the one who really helped me um, support my basketball interests. Mm -hmm. And um, so one of the things my dad used to do to help me build self-discipline from a father he he said, I'm going to look out as a father. We look out for your lives as our children, 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now. As a mother, you know, they're more nurturing. They're more day to day. So he felt it was his job to be um, a disciplinarian. And so with that, he woke me up at five o'clock every morning. Um, I never got to sleep in ever. <laughs> and we would we would pray together to the east in our in our cultural language and we would run to the east and every morning he would talk to me and say um Shiaje, life's gonna be 10 times harder for you because you're a female and you're a woman of color it's my job to build strength and build self-discipline so it can take you a long way in life and you know how to deal with challenges no matter what they are. And mm -hmm. so it was really my father who helped me, um, I guess, uh, build in basketball as part of it. But it was first and foremost running at five o'clock in, in the morning because that built self-discipline and it aligned with our cultural teachings. And, that's, and, and that's important. I was just talking to a parent for one of the players on our team last night in practice, and she was talking about how much this young lady wanted to play and how good her dad was as a player, but it's not one time told her to taught her anything about basketball. 
and she's seen all the clippings, all the pictures about him, but don't see him. So what you're saying right now is so important for fathers um, and, and how they influence you. They might, you might not think so, but you're, you're a prime example of that. So thank you for that. You're welcome for, for all the fathers listening out there. You know, kudos to you all for being great fathers. Us as children, we love you. We need you. And you make a tremendous impact in our lives. So kudos to all the fathers out there. That's right. Tommy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I could definitely relate. Um, you know, I lost my father to cancer uh, two years ago, March as well. And and he was also a big part of my my journey in sports and, uh, you know, and who I am today. So I definitely, um, you know, cherish everything I had with him and, and appreciate him for being there and pushing me and uh, getting on me when I felt I knew it all and uh, and just pushing me outside of my comfort zone and helping me grow. So uh, well, this, this should have been a Father's Day show because my yeah, dad just yeah. passed away a year ago also. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and, 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 and he's the one, man, baseball. He used to have us out there, man. Used to have us out there. I I used to step back instead of stepping towards the the the, 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 the pitcher, and he put bats behind me. So when I stepped back, I'd hit him and just roll. Yo, know, that's child abuse nowadays. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so Dr. Lee, what you won a state championship playing for Winslow? I did. Um. So when I was so I had transferred from Windrock. Um. It's it's. So the junior high in Windrock, it's called Teoto Middle mm -hmm. School. So I had transferred um, from my eighth grade year to my um, my freshman year to Winslow. And my freshman year, I became a starter. I, I had actually skipped a grade. So I was actually a starter when I was like 12. Um, I, so that it was, it, so I skipped uh, third grade. So that moved me up a year. Mm -hmm. And then um, the summer between my eighth grade and my freshman year, I started playing with Winslow varsity basketball team to, um, you know, they, they just want to get acclimated and see how well mm -hmm. I did with, with uh, coach Petro in there. And then that summer I became a starter when I was 12 and I was still playing AAU 12 and under as well during that summer. But um, in my freshman year, we did, lose against Windrock in the state championship game. We mm -hmm. made it all the way to runner up. We ended up losing um to my to my previous <laughs> alma mater, you know. <laughs> Imagine all the mm -hmm. the like, oh yeah, yeah. That I bet you got, yeah, <laughs> you got some yeah, on that. <laughs> you know, see you shouldn't have transferred. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. I remember being getting booed out of the gym because I was a trader. It was all good enough, but <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, I I remember that well. And um so that was my freshman year. Then fast forward to my senior year, we um had an undefeated season. We were 31 and 0. Wow. And um I remember one of our biggest games was during the Winslow Winter Classic. Um I forget what 5A school we played played against. I think it was Mountain View or mm -hmm. um and they were ranked number 1 in the state as the 5A but we ended up beating them and we had an, an amazing an amazing roster of of talent on our team and um any one of those girls uh could have went D1. Um I know one of them did out of our our team. Her name is Francine McCurtain. She played for um, Washington State, and she's now the current head coach for Chinle Women's Basketball Team, who just who who made it um, to to the state finals this year. So, shout out wow. to Francine. Yeah, that's all right. That's all right. So, and who were some of the other players on that team? Yeah, so there was um, our starting five was Amanda Hernandez, mm -hmm. um, Jolene Jackson, Verlaine Cascoli. Francie McCurtain and then myself. Um, we're all on the we're all on the team. Um, I just I just remember the going into the gym and you know that just basketball just felt so alive. Like mm -hmm. it, it livened not only my life but the community's life. 
Right. You know, the, the, the community looked forward to our games and it brought life and excitement into our community, pride, um, and you just felt the love and support. So I really loved bringing um, this, this opportunity to our family, our friends, our community to, to highlight um, women's basketball and to actually enjoy watching us play in a very competitive way. So that, to me, that was something that I'll always hold on to. Right. Absolutely. Um, all the test, there's no fans, uh, basketball fans, like the fans of Northern Arizona. Uh, <laughs> I mean, no Northern Arizona loves some basketball. The, the schools on the reservation travel in force. They fill gyms. Uh, you know, Winslow has a great gym for your size of school when they added the new gym over there. Right. I know they had to take into account the big crowds they get. Uh, you know, Wildcat Dan out there in Chinle. I mean, there's some amazing gyms out there, and the fans are, are tremendous. So you, you got to love Northern Arizona basketball fans. Right, right. <laughs> You either love them or you got to hate them when you're playing. <laughs> 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 and, 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 and I know Coach Neal has been on the on the opposite side when they're playing those schools. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, and, and, the, and the funny thing is um, we go down, we play all these teams from Phoenix in the 4A, but we know that we would receive much better competition in the 3A. You know, I mean, we can go down here and play Cactus. Not talking about them. These teams have a great team and stuff, but Cactus, Moon Valley, all these Phoenix teams. When we should be playing Chin Lee, Winslow, Tuba City, Holbrook. <laughs> that's where the competition is. And that's a, that's a, and we were used to be in the conference um, with them. And, um, you know, so uh, Winslow has that tradition and it's had that tradition for many, many years. And for you guys to carry it on and to bolster it the way you did, um, is, is, is Winslow. They, I know how they got behind you. I know how they followed you. And um, so for you guys to do that, that's just amazing to, for the town because the whole town celebrates that. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. And I remember us playing against Flag a few times. <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, but they were battles. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, and, you know, I can't remember any times when there was any really blowouts. You know, it was yeah. battles. And Winslow was only one of the few high school gyms that has box seating. You know, they got, <laughs> <laughs> they got that little middle, middle section there, you know. That is yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. So, at high school, where where did you go from there? Um, after high school, um, I did play at Scottsdale Community College. You were an artichoke? I was an artichoke, yes. <laughs> <laughs> played for Coach Coach Bike mm -hmm. um, at the time and um followed a few a few footsteps. I know um the famous Rinaldi Basenti that came from Windrock High School uh played for Scottsdale for a couple of years until she went on to play for Arizona State. Um, so, you know, I was just intrigued by, um, you know, first and foremost, also Coach Bike, really recruiting in Indian country when that wasn't a thing at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I felt he gave us res girls a little bit more opportunity um, at the time. And so now, you know, um, everyone recruits from our, neck of the woods which is amazing i'm here yes. for it i love it but um so that that's where i played for for a couple of years with scottsdale awesome yeah there's great competition down in the valley with all the maricopa schools um and all the sports so um after after playing at scottsdale you went is that when you went to asu to pursue your bachelor's degree yeah i just um you know, I just, after that, I, I kind of knew that, you know, what, what were my basketball could or could not take me at the time. And um, I have to, I guess, be mindful about my future path. And so I, at that time, I chose to just um, strictly focus on my academics uh, moving forward after, after basketball. 
I'm not saying that I didn't love basketball any less, but you know, when you're spending so much money on school and, and you have to kind of evaluate the pros and cons. And so school, school was the way it was for me moving forward. And looking at your educational um, accomplishments, you made the right choice. <laughs> Obviously. So, and, 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 you know, we always talk to the athletes about having that plan. Obviously, like, like Tommy said, you're, 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 you're very accomplished. You've done a lot of things. When did you formulate this plan? How old were you when you said, hey, this is definitely, because when you go to college, you probably might t change your major five times. You know how it is. <laughs> so when did you formulate that plan and say, this is my career path? Well, um, it was about the age of eight. Uh, both wow. my maternal and paternal grandfather were both um, Navajo medicine men. Mm -hmm. And um, I just saw them and and how they viewed health and healing and how they practice health and healing um from a different um from a different more holistic capacity and i remember one of my grandfathers um becoming really sick and that there was this huge clash a uh, language barrier uh cultural um clashes in terms of medicine and health and healing and I thought what a what a what a great way to go into the field of uh, medicine and health and try to hybrid um some of the Western medicine with our, our Navajo cultural um teachings uh so our community members can gravitate and have a better understanding when you um do a hybrid of both. And so that that's what I wanted to do is just help my community the way my grandfathers did. That's amazing. Um, when did you get the idea to to open the uh, Native Health? Um, and could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So, um, in in my background and training, I um uh and 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 Tommy um. You forgot to say I did my postdoc at UCLA School of Medicine. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's okay, there's no... <laughs> that list is like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, when I did, it was a two-year postdoc. And when I was at UCLA, I was focused on um, research that was centered on infectious disease and preventative medicine. And so, um, and then I found it, uh, my nonprofit organization called United Natives. And once um, COVID hit, because of my training in infectious disease and preventative medicine, um, and actually I believe I am like one of only five trained Native Americans in the U.S. that specializes in that type of scientific research. Um, so I, I, I use my nonprofit to work with... Um, Sure, we all know the name, Dr. Michelle Tom, um, out of Winslow. See, must be the water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. standing on the corner in Winslow, Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> so, me, myself, and Dr. Um, Dr. Tom uh, had a conversation, and she, uh, at the time, and she's still a physician, but at the time, she was working the COVID frontline um, as the physician. And so we um, decided to use my nonprofit as leverage to uh, get supplies for COVID relief um, efforts. So in 2020, that's when we got a lot of partnerships um, throughout Arizona, New Mexico, especially Northern Arizona. Um, and we had our warehouse held um, in Flagstaff that was donated to us. So we got all this Lysol, about over $2 million worth of Lysol products. And we just started disseminating all these products throughout um, some Apache communities, Navajo and Hopi communities. And so that's when um, A, the need was there to come in to help, um, especially with our, our tribal have limited resources. 
and then um and then we just see all the ripple impacts just like um a lot of other communities in the world and especially understanding native american health disparities ours were a little bit more prevalent so the need to start um, a mental health program to address a lot of the social and behavioral in addition to the health issues was was such a need so that's when i then started um to make efforts to start a, a health company. And, and how far does it reach? So um, so we have a hybrid with United Natives. Um, so right now we are doing um, national and we're focused on telehealth. Uh, so telemental health and we're recruiting um, therapists, uh, licensed therapists in each state, so we're able to provide therapy in every state, and um, and we actually grant free therapy sessions to any of our community members, um, UnitedNatives.org. So this is an amazing program. It's the first time that a um, nonprofit has ever did a national um, telehealth program that's free for tribal communities. Okay. Let's slow down a minute and let's just give that <laughs> another plug. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, uh, that's absolutely amazing that uh, you've been able to, you know, grow it, you know, to the, to the size and not just focus on, you know, the physical health, but to, to dive in and help mental health. I know we're younger. It wasn't really a topic, right? It was like toughen up and deal with it or whatever. And, right. you know, and, and now to see the spotlight on mental health and helping people get through that is, is phenomenal. So uh, kudos to you and, and for starting this and helping people, you know, battle those, those issues. Right. And that was serious about that before the show's over. We want you to really give that a plug. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, we, we really do. Cause that's so important. So important. Um, and, and thank you for doing that. So, how many degrees do you have? <laughs> uh, two thousand five, five, and and a pre doc, and um. So I did my pre doc at Hopkins for two years, focused on Indigenous health, and then my post doc for two years, um, and so that's considered additional training. So I think with all my education combined, um, including my pre-doc and my post-doc, I think I was in school for about 17 years, or I was in, in academic training for about 17 years total. Mm. Yeah. That's, uh, that's that's discipline right there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got my oh. master's degree. I was out. <laughs> I believe you me. There, there were times when I felt like giving up. I mean, there were... Definitely. What, what? What kept you from not giving up? Um, you know, just just thinking about my. To be honest, it was really thinking about um one of my ancestors' journey when back in the back in the in the you know decades ago, uh, Navajo people were force forcibly removed from our homeland um to a place called Bosque Redondo in New Mexico which is about a 300 mile walk and my great great grandmother escaped uh that that um that captivation and she journeyed back by herself 300 miles and was very determined to make it back to her homeland um and not being imprisoned and so um, just every time I felt like giving up, I really just thought about her and her journey of her determination to not only escape, but to stay alive and to make it back to her, to our homeland and in, in our community. So, um, you know, I guess uh, giving up was an option. I'm like, man, if she can do that right. and, and fight right. through and persevere through, you yes. know, that journey, then I'm sure that I can find a way to persevere through my journey. So that's what really kept me um kept me aligned all the times I wanted to give up. And it's so hard, you know. Right. Uh, it was, you know, there's often times I was crying to my mom. 
I just want to give up. I'm, I'm just going to quit. I'm just going to go home. Like this is, I can't do this. And just a lot of self doubt and, um, and, and, you know, but I guess it's a process we have to, it, it's us versus us for us to get out of that mindset and, and right. for us to, to find that internal um, strength just to keep moving forward. Well, that's uh, thanks so much for that, that inspirational uh, story there. Um, I see why you and my sister probably got along well. Uh, I see a lot, you know, you guys are driven and, you know, there's no quit in you and, and you're, you're definitely not only uh, fighting for yourself, but for your families and, and for everybody around you to, to inspire and, and motivate and help others. So um, yeah, that's, that's absolutely um, amazing what, what you went through and, and persevering. Um, so I'll never complain again about <laughs> Yes. So, but, but just, <laughs> I, I hear you, man. We can't do nothing. Oh, well, I broke my arm, but she got 12 degrees. So. <laughs> you know, um, listening to how you talk about how, how you, what your great grandmother did, uh, great, great grandmother probably um, did to where she's going. Um, and I know just in the black culture, I, I, me being older, I came up watching the black community get bit by dogs, water hoses, you know, just to struggle to vote and all those things. Um, and I, I don't know sometimes if the young black people understand what their ancestors went through to allow them to be there, to do the things they do today. Do you feel the same way in the Native American culture? Absolutely. Uh, this is what, you know, when we do talk to youth um, and, and some of our uh, community members who are battling mental health issues, um, just a reminder that you come from strength and resilience. You come from people who survived such traumatic events and experiences and um, that it's all housed within us. And, and you know, sometimes we, we're just focused on the glass half empty versus half full and how to switch that mind frame um so we can go out and be the best person for for ourselves but absolutely i would i, I just if i could just you know flush this into our youth's brain and um, because of i believe there's similar issues between black and native youth right. in terms of just you know lack of um lack of belief in themselves that they can yeah. actually go out and and make a difference in their lives and their families' lives and the community's lives and 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 know it and actually believe it, not not think, well maybe, you know, I could try. Um, you know, it, it, there for some reason we just have just a huge amount of self doubt in us. And you know, I it, it stems from all avenues, but somewhere is there and we just don't have that belief in ourselves and we give up before we even make attempt to start, you know, and it, it's like that. Um, yeah. So I just, you know, I, I also want to say I failed many, many times. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I failed chemistry, mm -hmm. you know, I had to go get a tutor, but I didn't let that chemistry grade, like keep me from mm -hmm. pursuing my, my, my education. I mean, along my steps in my path, like failure is part of the journey. Right. Uh, and it just right. helps us revisit how we can succeed. You know, if we fail 10 times, we're going to, we're going to succeed the 11th. Exactly. And so I don't want us to get self defeated. It's like, man, I fail so many times. I'm just going to give up, you know, which, right. which a lot of us tend to do. And people have to understand that it's okay to fail. As long as you're giving it the best, your best shot. It's, it's okay. You know, you tell them on the basketball court, it's okay to mess up. If you're giving the best shot thing you can, if you're working as hard as you can, you're gonna mess up. Yeah. So um yeah. yeah, that's that's important for them to understand that failure is a part of the game. It's how you react to it. Absolutely. And in any game, right? The, the, it, the is. Game. it is. In any that, game. <laughs> that, those are the lessons that you learn and you remember the most is 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 the hard ones. Right. <laughs> right. So right. so how did you get into basketball? Uh, not basketball. I know I got into basketball, but owning men's teams. Well, um, so you know how 
once a hooper, always a hooper. You know, uh, so <laughs> you're just <laughs> you're you're still just involved in in the basketball world, like you know. Um, so my best friend I met in college, her name is uh, Tasha Washington. She, me, and her both played at Scottsdale. So she's now currently the head women's basketball coach at Scottsdale Community College. And 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 so I say that to say is you just maintain your basketball network um, mm-hmm. even as you grow grow older. Uh, so still with that basketball network that I um, still had as an adult, uh, just the opportunity had come up to um, see if I was interested in owning a at the time my initiation owning a third of a professional men's basketball team in uh, Mexico so absolutely I was on board you know because I love basketball and Mm -hmm. what what a cool thing to be a a professional team owner and so um uh halfway through the season bought bought the the other two owners out and um became sole a team owner of a league um, that is FIBA recognized. So, you know, FIBA accreditation mm-hmm. um, gives that huge stamp of a approval mm-hmm. says it's a legit international professional mm-hmm. basketball league. Um, plus you can bet on my teams anytime we're in season with that <laughs> FIBA accreditation <laughs> for, for you betters <laughs> out there. Um, <laughs> yeah, put that out there right yeah, quick. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, so and we're part of the Ciba pack the Ciba pack league um which is in mexico so and and then and then i just kind of spiraled into owning another team and um and i believe i am the only female in the country of mexico to own a professional sports team and the first native american to own a professional sports team as well. Wow, Good congrats website. on that. Yeah. So are, are both of these in the same league? Are they competing against each other? Yes, and um, I'm letting go of one team for certain. Um, So one of the teams I purchased, they were in trouble. And so I ended up just taking that over with, uh, with means to let one of them go and focus on the other post this season. So um, that's what, that's what, uh, wave I'm walking into now um you know because it, it it can be a conflict of interest so mm-hmm. uh so that's what I'm um working out the details of that and um it's been it's been an adventure um seeing basketball from a new from a from an ownership perspective mm-hmm. and um you know there's so many working elements I have a, a general manager shout out to King Buckley um who who played basketball for Purdue, then transferred to University of South Florida, then played um, some professional basketball. So he's my GM. Wow. Um, he helps me um, recruit uh, different different players throughout the country. Um, you know, this NCAA tournament time is really big for us because we're looking potential players um, that really just want a shot at playing professionally because they just need the end. And then their world work uh, awakens professionally because they're then enabled to go to other countries right. and 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 play throughout the year professionally. Um, so I kind of like. Have you all seen that movie Hustle? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay, kind of. <laughs> yes, that's an old movie. <laughs> Hustle with um the newer one with Adam Sandler. With Adam Sandler when he. Oh no, I haven't seen that. Yeah. No, I haven't seen that. Yeah. Okay. So he, where he's kind of going to these countries and finding the diamond in the rough basketball right. player. Yeah. Yeah. That's you. Yeah. That's, yep. yeah. that's your gym. Yep. That, that's, that's, uh... that's, and what is your team's name? So um, the one in, in Tecate is called Tecate Magic. And the one in Rosarito is called Rosarito Sun. Okay. Yeah. So when I, when you're saying that, you're looking at other players, uh, you know, game recognizes game. So, I'm sure you do good at spotting out your next, uh, your next gyms. <laughs> hey, well, if, if you're ever looking for a 70 year old point guard, 
<laughs> and he could throw a little bit of Spanish in there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, like Taco Bell or something like that. But yeah, you know, I can't shoot, but I still play a little defense. But, <laughs> you know what? I mean, I mean, this is amazing, and and to know we have people like this, and that's what's so great about this show. Not blowing our own horn, but we got such amazing people, like Dr. Lee from our own backyard that folks don't know about. And you are the reason we do this show, Dr. Lee. You really are the reason we do this show because we have incredible, incredible people from right here in our backyard that are not, obviously I'm not looking for notoriety, not looking to get your name out there, just looking to do the right thing. It's our job to put you out there and let folks know how incredible you are. So thank you for being on the show. And with that, oh, go. Oh, I was just going to say, before we get to the next, uh, before we wrap up, if anyone's interested in learning more about your organizations, your nonprofits, or donating, how do they do that? Yes, you may please go to our website, unitednatives.org. We're also on Instagram, united underscore natives, I-N-C. Um, I just would like to say that right now we have a huge wood program that actually occurs in Flagstaff. So we have a okay. huge wood, wood lot um, and we donate uh, free wood to our native elders, especially during this coal season. Um, a lot of our, our, our relatives don't have electricity to heat their homes. So they rely on, on um, their wood stoves. And so it's so crucial that we have this firewood program going out. And it goes, um, it's all stems from Flagstaff area and distributed out. So um, right, literally right, right in your neck of the woods. And yes. um, so, you know, any, any opportunities to collaborate, um, to, to donate um, anything that you feel that our communities would, could use as a resource. Um, we were more than happy to have that conversation. So. Awesome. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll definitely get more more details about the wood program and, and, and send it out to our networks of, of people in, in community that may not know about it, but yeah, we have a lot of great people that, that love to help out right. and uh, see if we could help grow this or, you know, uh, see what we could do to, to collaborate and, and make it bigger and better and, and give back to our, to the elders of uh, in, in Northern Arizona. You know, we, we love all of our Northern Arizona residents. So uh, we're all about helping. So, yeah, I'll get more details for sure. Awesome. Right. And now it's about time in the show as we get ready to close out. And when we ask Tommy to ask <laughs> you, well, we ask you to give a little impart a little wisdom on us. You've done that the whole show. So now we need a little <laughs> bit of sugar to top it off. And we do that by way of Tommy's da 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 da, -da <laughs> golden <laughs> nugget question of the day. Get him, Tommy. So, um, I mean, you, you've, you've given us a ton of, uh, you know, knowledge today. Um, our, our final question is what advice or words of encouragement would you give to the youth of Northern Arizona that are struggling to reach their true potential in life or that may feel they're trapped or limited, you know, being here, um, you know, what, what kind of words of encouragement could you give to them? Well, I think just, as I stated before, just um, believe in yourself. Um, also, don't be lazy. You're going to have to get out there and do the work. You're going to have to do it for yourself and, and don't depend on, you know, family doing the work for you. It's your dream. It's your goal. It's your vision. Go out there and do the work because, you know, I think part of the time that we lose our determination is because of laziness and lack of self-discipline and and you have to have that to keep consistent you know you have to build those study habits you can't just study once a week and then next week you're studying for three times a week and like the consistency is part of the self-discipline and the self-discipline is part of defeating laziness um, oftentimes it's doing the things you don't want to do when you need to do them in order to get where you need to go. And um, so I, I think a lot of our youth is, you know, just to believe in yourself and don't be lazy, just go out and do it. Um, you know, quoting Nike, just do it. 
<laughs> get out there and just go do it. Go do it. Get it done. <laughs> there you go. You, you sound like a coach. <laughs> you sound like a coach. Well, you, well, you know what, Dr. Lee? We, we really appreciate you being on the show. Um, definitely want to stay in contact with you because when you do come back to town to visit, would love to have you come talk to the girls on our team. Would love to. So please, well, I want to make sure I get your contact information before we leave. Um, but you're such an inspiration. You're that hidden gem that nobody knew about that we're going to make sure they know about now. <laughs> <laughs> and I, 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 I just have so much respect for you and, and, and what you're doing. And, and I just met you today, but I am so proud of you. Uh, and what you're doing that and it's not just for the native american community you're doing this for everybody and uh but that's where your focus is rightfully so so just want to thank you for being on the show thank yeah. you so much absolutely i've been waiting for this to happen um yeah you've been talking about it for a while <laughs> yeah my, <laughs> my sister kind of set us up back in that you know 2020 thing where you know we were on the same page then donating uh um uh hand sanitizer and stuff to you know to the native american community the reservation out there we're so that's kind of where we 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 first crossed paths and uh and you know it, the anticipation was um you know it, it was i was i couldn't wait for this i i my sister had told me about you but um everything you've done has been more than i could have ever imagined so uh, keep doing your thing. You know, it's you're making Northern Arizona proud, and uh, and we love what you're doing. So, absolutely, thank you so much for being on. Thank you both. Thank you, and and thank you to Carrie, your sister Tommy. Absolutely yes. love her. Um, thank you, Coach. I would love to come talk to the yes. young, young girls of the team. It'd be my honor to do so. And of course, Tommy. You know, I have become um, pretty good social media buddies so yes, um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, 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 well that's all right well i'm gonna join the family but <laughs> well and, hey thank thank you so much for being on the show and, and once again don't leave yet because we got to get that information all right okay. all right well tommy hey man you do a great job of finding the guests, man. I don't know where you find them from, but they're amazing. <laughs> they, well, uh, uh, are, they, uh, one of our previous guests, Cliff, they're, they're family. Oh, really? Cliff or John? Not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's all right. Hey, small yeah. world. Yeah. Small world. You guys come from a great line. because yeah, Exactly. Good, so. Exactly. So, <laughs> but, uh, well, but, good, man. So, I know well, it, well, time to get out of here, man. Yeah, it's Friday. We got to get going, get this weekend started. That's right. <laughs> that's that's right. So, you know, hey, I'll do Coach Johnson, and I'll say, hey, I don't know what y'all you got to do the rest of the day, but. You got to get yeah. out of here. Got to leave. <laughs> we got to go watch the March Madness. We got to go yeah. watch the March Madness. Yeah. That's right. That's right. It's good. It's good. So, hey, yeah. you guys have a nice day. Everybody out there, have a great day. Be safe. Enjoy your weekend. Peace.